now let's think about testing these theories we've had. We've made a list of all these potential problems, but now we really want to test it and put it through its paces. And this is going to be where we're testing and evaluating the results that we get. If we don't get good results, we're going to have to start the process all over again of going to the next thing on our list to figure out if that's really the issue. If we're fixing the problem, then we're continuing on with our particular troubleshooting process. So during this testing process, we're going to be looking at these things. We're going to be trying to answer some questions, but very often the questions that we create will create more questions. We'll try to resolve this mouse issue by changing a driver, and then all of a sudden the keyboard stops working. And you're trying to figure out, I just replaced the driver for the mouse. How could that have anything to do with the keyboard? Well, that's yet another question that would have to be answered. You may have to take some additional steps, however. Bring in the big guns. Call somebody who's had this problem before. Talk to the manufacturer of this product. Look in the manuals for what happens to be there. Use every resource available to you because very often there's so many different pieces. We may be working on a piece of equipment we're just not intimately familiar with. So let's find someone who is. Check those resources as well. Now, if this problem isn't resolved with this test process, you're going to have to go back to the beginning and look at your list of possible issues and go to the next thing. If you think the problem's hardware and you swap out the mouse and the problem's still there, now let's go to the next thing on our list and see if that's going to resolve the issue. Eventually, once you get through the list of all of the possible things it can be, you're going to find it. It's going to be one of those. Those are the only things it could possibly be. So keep trying and trying until you run across the exact resolution that solves this particular problem. Now that we've gone through the process, we've looked at what the possible problems could be. We ran a test ourselves and we realized, aha, it has something to do with a driver or a piece of hardware or a piece of software that was loaded. And we were able to resolve the issue in our lab. Now we need to think about what is our plan of action going to be to actually resolve this issue. And this usually on a single system, not really a big deal. We're trying to put together a plan here, and we've already done all of the testing. We just now need to find a good way to resolve the issue once and for all. Now, if you're working on a single workstation, very simple to do usually. It's one system, one computer, one user. But what if this problem was something that was happening across hundreds of machines in your network all at the same time? You may be having to roll out a fix for this that's done automatically when people log in, or you may need to push it out with your software management solution that you have in house. So a simple thing on one desktop, certainly something that's easy to work with, but you may have to make this a very broad solution that goes across many, many different systems all at once. And in complex environments, that's no easy task. Now that we've pushed out the problem or we resolved the issue on somebody's machine, we still need to make sure we fixed it. We fixed it in the lab. We tested it with our lab system. We ran through all the paces, and we think we know that's the issue. But you really shouldn't consider yourself finished until you've actually resolved the problem and tested that you've actually resolved the problem. You should, in your mind, already have a test. If somebody's having a problem with a mouse and you replace the mouse, it's pretty easy to see if the mouse is working again. With software, it's not quite so easy. Somebody was having a problem with software and you cleared things off of the hard drive because you believe it was related to a full hard drive, you need to run that software again and make sure now that it actually works. You'd be surprised how often people will say, it's fixed now, and they get up and they leave. You sit down to work and they didn't fix it at all. In their minds, they think they did, but they never really tested it to see if that was the solution. You also want to be sure that if you're solving a problem, you're not actually breaking something else. So we swapped the mouse out with a new model. But what you didn't realize is there was software on this person's computer that used some some very customized settings on the old mouse, and now those customized settings are gone. Or perhaps you changed a setting in software that now broke another piece of software. Those are things to consider. Uh, these computers are extremely complex environments, and one thing that you change could have an effect on other things in the same system. So very often we'll set up a problem, we'll fix it, and then we'll say, watch it over the next day. If you continue to have problems with it, please give me a call. I know exactly where to go from here. Now that we've resolved the issue, it's been a day, everybody's happy with the troubleshooting that we did, and it seems to be working exactly well, now's the time to step back and say, what happened here? What problem did they see? Was this related to something we did? And let me document that now because we may need that information in the future. 
It's a particular problem people overlook very often, but it's extremely valuable. You went through a lot with your processes to troubleshoot this. It would be a waste if you just let that now disappear forever. It's valuable knowledge that you have, and certainly other people would be able to take advantage of that. Now, why don't we create a knowledge base? Take all of these problems you run into and all these issues that you find and create a big list of those. Make it searchable. Put it online. Stick it on a web page. Other people in your organization can really make use of that. When you start looking at these things over a very long period of time, it also becomes even more valuable. You may have a hard drive fail, and you replace the drive, and it's up and running. But if you looked at over an entire year or an entire five years at all of the hard drives you've replaced, what might you be able to find? Well, Google did exactly this. They have an amazingly large number of servers with an even more amazingly large number of hard drives. They did a huge study of the failure trends that they saw when working with all of their hard drives. They had over 100,000 hard drives, and because they were able to collect this data, document it, and really examine it after the fact, they were able to provide some very, very interesting details about the life cycles of hard drives. You can find that paper at labs.google.com slash papers slash disk underscore failures dot PDF. Some very interesting reading there. Let's see what you can remember now about the troubleshooting process. Our first question is what should be done after implementing a fix? We've applied a fix to someone's computer. So obviously, the next step is going to be to make sure that it is working exactly the way it should be. and Verify the full system functionality. The next question, what is the last step of the troubleshooting process and probably the most important? Well, that will be documenting exactly what we did. What was our issue? What did we test? What were our findings? And what were the final outcomes from that? And lastly, what should be done prior to establishing a theory about the problem? Well, before we do anything relating to establishing a theory, we need to really figure out what's going on. Let's ask some questions. Let's drill down on the problems. Let's look at logs. And let's really get a very good understanding of exactly the problem our end user is experiencing. That covers what we needed to know with section 2.1 about the troubleshooting theory and stepping through identifying the problem, establishing a theory, testing that theory, putting it in practice, making sure that what we put in practice worked properly, and lastly, documenting exactly what we did. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, we've got much more on our website at freeaplus.com.